Hello and welcome in this session on teacher in diverse roles. Actually, nowadays, as a teacher, when you enter in your class, when you go to your school, when you are in society, you are in family, all people who are associated with you, all institutions where you participate in your social and professional life, looks towards you with some expectations. In Indian society, in Indian schools, Teachers are like role models and many people believe that teachers should play a different role in different situations. So how a teacher can play diverse roles in different situations? This is the point of discussion in today's session. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education IGNU, the course instructor for this course. And I'm going to discuss with you different roles which a teacher performs in different situations at different places. But before that, let us recall a very famous quote of our honorable former president and very beloved personality of our country, Dr. APJ Abul Kalam Saab, that if a country is to be corruption free and become a nation of beautiful minds, I strongly feel there are three key societal members who can make a difference. They are father, the mother and the teacher. So this quote basically reflecting that in making an individual a good citizen, a citizen which is required in a nation, what nation expects from an individual is the responsibility of father mother and teacher. So teacher has a very important role in shaping the future of individual in this country. But when we look towards the role of a teacher, we need to see its role in different situations in different way. Let us start with teacher as an individual, that how teacher behaves in the classroom, what is the role of a teacher as a colleague? What is expected from a teacher in community? And how a teacher plays its role as a citizen of the country? When we talk about teacher in the classroom, the very first requirement from a teacher is that a teacher should ensure that objectives, learning objectives, instructional objectives, which has been set are achieved. So focus of a teacher in the classroom is more on ensuring the achievement of objectives. The objectives which he or she frames before coming to the class for a particular lesson, for a particular subject or the objectives which are set by the regulatory bodies or the curriculum framing committees and bodies related to that subject. All these ob objectives are to be achieved with the support of teacher in the classroom. A teacher facilitates learning in terms of knowledge, in terms of knowledge creation, skill development and attitude formation. So if you see the role of a teacher as a facilitator in the light of this statement, it means that teacher not only facilitate the knowledge creation, but also he or she facilitates the skill development. When I'm talking about the skills, the skills which have been mentioned in a particular subject can be the skills related to science, the skills related to mathematics, the skills related to social science, as well as the life skills which make a student a meaningful and a useful citizen of the country and a contributing member of the society. So focus is on both type of skills, the academic skills, the literary or the subject related skills as well as on the life skills and the attitude formation. It is the teacher who affects a lot the attitude formation of the learners. How the learners will behave in a particular situation 
it always depend that how their attitude has been shaped in their classrooms if a teacher is coming with positive attitude if a teacher is looking towards everything with a positivity if a teacher is trying to find out solution of every problem in any situation the same transmits to the learners and learners also frame their attitude like that also it is the responsibility of a teacher to create a conducive learning environment in the classroom the learning environment where learners are free to share where learners are free to ask there is no hesitation there is no fear there is no trauma these things are not in the classroom if learners are active they are sharing their feelings their observations their expectations with each other and with the teacher if they are free to ask any question to the teacher at any time and teacher is encouraging the learners to ask such questions definitely such environment is a conducive learning environment and it is the responsibility of a teacher that in the classroom he or she should create a conducive learning environment also a teacher's behavior in the classroom is being copied by the learners most the way of talking the style of communication verbal and non verbal both even sometimes the dressing sense the behavior attributes which learners are observing in the classroom punctuality honesty commitment many thing because learners observe you in the classroom not only as a subject teacher not only as a person who is facilitating them to attain mastery over the content but also they follow you they copy you as a citizen so your behavior in the classroom your attitude towards the learner towards the society towards the issues everything is being copied by your learners that's why a teacher needs to present an ideal behavior in the classroom then teacher as a colleague in a school in a institution in a university in a college teacher is not an individual teacher acts as a team member you share your views you acknowledge others views you support your colleagues for facilitating teaching learning so for this the first thing which is required in a teacher is that a teacher should be receptive to the ideas of others if a teacher is thinking or is of the view that whatever i know is the best i am the best in the department i am the best in the faculty no one can come near to me i do not want to get ideas from others i am the king i am the boss i am the best teacher in the world in the school in the society if a teacher is with this attitude in the classroom or in the school he or she cannot progress more because the first thing we need to learn that we are continuous learners we are lifelong learners as teachers a teacher is a teacher until he is a learner or she is a learner so we should be receptive to the ideas of others we also need to identify the areas where we may require support from our colleagues we know many things but we are not knowing everything and all the things we may be knowing a particular subject well but we may not be knowing this other subject equally well we may be knowing to handle a particular situation but we may not be knowing a particular situation which we cannot handle but my colleague can handle so it means we need to identify the areas academic and personal where we require support from our other teacher fellows in our school in our college in our institution because they have expertise in that area i am not having that and we also should develop an ability to reach out to other colleagues without any prejudice and bias when we are reaching towards our colleagues for their views for their opinion we should not have any prejudice or bias towards them sometimes it comes naturally but it is quite harmful in the school environment 
so you need to behave as a good colleague as a supportive colleague as a receptive colleague in the school so this is your second personal attribute then teacher in the community as a community member you also have certain responsibilities like a teacher needs to promote the importance of education among the parents and community members especially in rural areas where parents may not be aware about the benefits of the education or any educational initiative there may be some community members who may be hampering some educational development initiatives so it is your responsibility to promote the importance of education among those you need to organize awareness programs on the issues of common interest of the community those issues may not be directly related to education but they are of the use for the community it can be sanitation it can be cleanliness it can be environmental issue it can be any issue but you need to develop awareness by organizing awareness programs and like a student or like a learner in the classroom community also looks towards you as a model and community expects high moral behavior from you they have high moral expectations from you so you as a member of the community you need to reflect high moral values which are expected in a community from you and as a community member you need to be a multi dimensional personality who not only disseminate the knowledge who not only facilitate the learning who not only shape the behavior of the learners but also the individual who is an active member of the community who is facilitating community by spreading awareness by making them aware by facilitating them in understanding the importance of the education for them as well as for their kids so you need to be an active member of the community and then teacher as a citizen how teacher facilitates as a citizen we are a citizen of a country who has democratic values so it is your responsibility that you should enable the functioning of democracy by participating in democratic processes there can be elections there can be other activities where you need to participate democratically as well as you need to motivate the community members the society members to perform their democratic values and democratic duties that is your role you need to promote democratic values among your learners through your behavior if in the classroom you are biased towards a particular student or you are having some misconception about a particular community about a particular religion about a particular socio economic class and you do not behave equally with all the students it means you are not disseminating the democratic values in your classroom it is your responsibility that you should engage yourself actively for ensuring equity equality and inclusion in your classroom and sometimes a teacher is not a follower a teacher is not a blind follower of anything which is given to him to follow a teacher should work as an unbiased critic towards the issues which are being affected which are being which are affecting the social structure you need to inspire your learners to achieve their best and to serve the nation then comes the teachers personal characteristics when i'm talking about personal characteristics i'm talking about personal qualities affection empathy concern and commitment and humor let us discuss about these also one by one what are the personal qualities your personal qualities like your values honesty truthfulness loyalty punctuality cleanliness dedication affection because your examples put a lasting and inspiring effect on your learners so you are expected to provide a lasting and inspiring example from your personal qualities from your behavior people are keen observers they not only observe what you are teaching they also observe how are you behaving with your colleagues with other students how are you speaking how are you talking all these things are being 
discussed observed and followed by your students in the class because your students your pupils are intelligent enough to observe the discrepancies in your behavior means what a teacher preaches and how she or he actually behaves if there is a difference between these two they observe it then comes the affection in classroom you should show the love and concern for your pupils if there is no affection in your classroom you cannot make your pupils feel wanted and accepted and if there is no affection between you and your pupils it will be very difficult for you even to disseminate the knowledge even to facilitate them in construction of knowledge slowly some of the students some of the learners some of the pupils may become non participant if you are not showing your affection towards them and non participation leads to poor performance and poor performance leads to withdrawal from the system so you should be aware about it then comes the empathy what does empathy mean empathy means to see the world through a child's eye if you are empathetic it enables you to feel concern for your people's problem and the effort they are making to cope up with them you try to understand your people's both emotionally as well as intellectually and it also enables you to be judicious impartial and objective it is suggested to you that by showing your empathetic behavior you need to treat your all peoples with equanimity irrespective of the background from which they are coming your concern and commitment is also a very important personal quality which affect learners you need to be dedicated and concerned about the development of your peoples improvement seldom occurs spontaneously it is always attained through deliberate efforts and practices so what is required from you you need to keep away the habitual language of rejection and you need to acquire a language of acceptance you need to be authentic genuine and sincere then comes the humor humor is basically a combined element in a way that is different unexpected and incongruous you need to develop the ability to play spontaneously with the ideas concepts and relationships you need to arouse laughter or a smile on the lips of your students which could make their minds lighter so dear teachers make a classroom alive and create a relaxed atmosphere then your role as a transmitter of knowledge as a transmitter of knowledge what you do you introduce the lesson to the students whenever required you explain the concepts if your students have, are having certain doubts you clarify those doubts with suitable illustrations and examples sometimes you draw some diagrams while explaining sometimes you ask questions to instigate the students to ignite their minds to think in different directions so through this way you act as a transmitter of knowledge sometimes you act as a planner teacher is also a good planner what you plan you plan objectives every planning has some objectives you plan how to teach a particular concept how to reflect on any practice how you will observe any event or development of life skills among your learners so you always have certain objectives when you are planning then for whom you are planning you are planning for your learners so learners are at the center of every planning in teaching learning their abilities their strengths their weaknesses everything is at the center of planning then when you are planning you plan at many places when you are make a lesson plan you plan when you think about the assessment you plan when you organize any event whether it is for co curricular activities or sports or anything you plan and you also plan that when this activity will take place so planning also includes dimension of when and where where the event will happen the place of the event you plan whether it will happen in the classroom you plan it will happen in the school premises or you plan that it will happen outside the school campus 
and you also plan how you will execute what will be the appropriate strategy for execution in this you plan about method you plan about media you plan about process you plan about the sequence how to execute your plan this is also a part of your planning and not only this you also plan about the outcomes what are the expected outcome from this session from this lecture from this class from this topic but in constructivist perspective learning is more important than outcomes but still we are talking about outcomes based learning so we plan our desired learning which basically helps in executing the plan to facilitate the learner then comes your role as a facilitator how you will promote learning how will help your learners to develop more and more by learning how can you provide them a conducive learning environment to interact with the peers to interact with the other members to interact with you how you will facilitate learning and further development as a facilitator when you play your role as a facilitator you do not give them content you are not a disseminator of content you are not a content provider you are basically a person who create a situation or the an environment where a learner can construct his or her own meaning his or her own idea by using their examples by using their experiences by sharing it with their peers by learning from the peers by explaining and understanding the concepts which you are giving to them to understand by exploring different dimensions of the applications of the concept which is being presented in front of them so your role is basically as a facilitator there and not only a facilitator sometimes you also play your role as a co-creator co-creator means you work with the learners as team members you motivate your learners to frame their questions about various observations you ask the learners to interpret a situation in their own way and you also interpret in their way you facilitate them to identify a problem you facilitate them to identify the probable solution of a problem while scaffolding them while supporting them while facilitating them so you not only act as a facilitator but you also act as a co-creator in the classroom you encourage your learners to work in group you also become an active member of the group you keep your learners active and motivate them to observe react and reflect continuously sometimes you help your learners in evolving new knowledge using their previous knowledge through discussion debate inquiry or experimentation it depends upon the content and the subject you also play a role of a leader when i'm talking about role of a teacher as a leader i'm talking about the leadership role in the classroom as well as leadership role in the school a teacher has to play both the roles the leadership role in the classroom as well as leadership role in the school what what is expected from you if you are a leader you need to develop the trust building you need to diagnose the institutional and classroom conditions you need to develop the ways that how you can deal with the processes which are involved and you also require to manage your work which is called work management so as a leader you trust building is your one function diagnosing the institutional conditions is another function dealing with the processes which are there in the school or in the classroom is a third function and work management is also an important function of a teacher as a leader then you act as a counselor sometimes because the students do not come to you only for their teaching learning problem or the problems related to content sometimes they share their personal problems sometimes they share the problems which they are facing in the classroom so you need to be sensitive to identify the learners with the problems you need to understand the nature of the problems you need to help your learners to realize their potential that yes you can solve the problem so if you are doing this you are acting as a counselor what is expected from you if you are acting as a counselor you need to be a keen observant you need to be sensitive towards the learners and most importantly you need to be empathetic means you need to be able to see the problems from the learners perspective and be objective don't be biased don't have any misconception or preconception towards any particular learner towards any particular situation so teachers at the end i would suggest 
that as a teacher you need to play different roles a variety of roles you can be a counselor you can be a facilitator you can be a co-creator you can be a leader you can be a manager and your personal qualities and abilities influence lot to your learners so be honest in your roles and facilitate learning with this i should say that you will be able to understand with this discussion that what are the basic roles which are expected from a teacher in the classroom in the school and in the society and you will participate and you will do justice with all your roles thank you very much